my friends. This is Diane, Material Girl 338. I'm making a new dish today, and I thought I'd uh, take you guys along for the ride. And uh, it's a simple dish. It's a one-pot dish, and I think you're going to like it. And most of the people that have watched my videos, I, I use fresh ingredients always. I try not to use any processed foods, canned foods. So if I do, limit it, okay? So I'm going to make couscous and uh, chicken with vegetables. And I have here one, one cup of uh, shredded chicken. And I bought this the other night at Costco, at the roasted chickens. And then, you know, we ate a little bit, and I had some left over. And then I put the rest in Ziploc bags, and I froze it. When I want to make a dish with chicken in it, I just take out a Ziploc bag, and I just put it into the dish. Right now, I have extra virgin olive oil heating up. These are some marinated portobello mushrooms that I made the other night, and they're marinated in red burgundy wine. I have here some uh, sun-dried tomatoes about five or six um, little baby tomatoes. These are from my garden in the summertime, and I have a video on how I do my sun-dried tomatoes. I have a half a can of diced tomatoes, just to give it some color, and uh, I freeze everything. These are fresh tomatoes. They were from my garden, <laughs> and I'm freezing them, and it's December, but you, as long as you seal them properly, and they're not, they don't get, um, you know, freezer burn, they're fine. So these are tomatoes. And then I have um, a yellow pepper. It's about a little more than a cup. And I have some carrots. And these are, this are, these are fresh carrots. And I have uh, about uh, four minced cloves of garlic. This is when I canned my mushrooms, this is the juice from the mushrooms. So I'm going to use that instead of using chicken broth. And I have a little bit of onions. With, mixed in here is a, one or two shallots. And then, of course, I have my couscous. And I have some frozen um, green onion, which I'm not going to keep out too long. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to sweat my carrots because the carrots are hard and they take the longest to cook. So I have my uh, heat at medium and I'm just going to sweat them. It's good that the oil is hot. I, I didn't have the oil really hot. So And you're not going to put them on high because you don't want to fry them. Guys, if you hear noise in the back again, that's my washing machine. I have a very noisy washing machine. So just, you know, bear with me. Okay, so I'm going to take, well, these are, um, well, these are sweating. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover them. So first I want to get them up a little bit high so that the oil cooks, so that they don't, the oil doesn't get absorbed by the carrots. Once I bring it up to a fry, whoops, I'm going to simmer it. And I'm just going to sprinkle some pepper on there. No salt right now because you want the sweetness of the carrot to marinate. Okay, so now I'm going to put this on, cover it, put it on medium, and I'm going to cook it for about eight minutes. Then I'll come back. Hey, my friends, my onions and my pepper and garlic has been cooking for about a minute or two. I'm going to add my carrots back in here. I want that to cook. I just cut up some fresh uh, parsley and basil. I took my plants and some of my plants, and you know, they're in dormancy, but they're still growing, but very slowly. Okay, now I'm going to put the sun dried tomatoes in. 
if you get a chance, watch my video on how to make sun-dried tomatoes. Because that is an, an Italian, Sicilian way of making them. It's not, you know, the American way. Now I'm going to sprinkle some pepper and some salt, season it a little bit. You put on your liking, whatever you like. I'm going to add my mushrooms. Because you don't want to overcook the peppers. I'm going to put the tomatoes in because they're frozen and they got to cook. So they got to um, defrost. I have some spinach, some frozen spinach, I think. Guys, try to freeze as much as you can. When you see something on sale, just buy it and, you know, wash it, clean it, and freeze it. Now, I also I have a freeze dryer. I have a harvest dried freeze dryer. And I freeze dry my spinach, my kale, uh, tomatoes. I did a little bit of the tomatoes, but when you have the freeze dryer, they really don't want you to do the tomatoes because there's some kind of acid in the tomato that just uh, damages the pump. So if you have the harvest dried freeze dryer, uh, don't put tomatoes in because I learned the hard way. See, these are my, this is my spinach that's freeze-dried. It breaks apart, but it's still... No, this is kale. Sorry. This is kale. But the spinach looks just like that. I'm going to add some garlic powder. Some onion powder. And some of my seasonings. I'm going to move this pot over. Putting onion powder in. Some garlic powder. This is uh, everything but bagel. Everything but the bagel from Trader Joe's. I love it. It's delicious. This is 21... Seasoning Salute from Trader Joe's. A little bit. Gives it a beautiful flavor. You need seasonings. You, you don't have to have them, but it makes the food taste better. So these are, you know, my, onion, my uh, tomatoes are almost defrosted. I'm going to cover it a little bit. And I'm going to take out some white wine a little later on. I'll post the recipe below. My friends, the tomatoes are now soft or softer. I'm going to add a little bit more salt because it's going to need it because I didn't put too much in. And now I'm going to put the couscous in. Couscous is like, it's pasta. It's just another grain. And it's like making a risotto. But the easier way is to put it in the pot like I'm doing. 
Let, up, let it absorb the juices. Now I'm going to put the tomato in. Just a half a can. You don't need a whole can because then you're going to make sauce. And you don't want to make sauce. And the chicken I'm going to wait till the end because it's already cooked. The onion I'm going to wait till the end because it's already cooked. I'm going to add some white wine. One, two, three, four, five. Five sprinkles or more if you like. Wine makes everything taste better. And now I'm going to add my mushroom juice from the canning. And I'm going to do it slowly because when you can, um, the juice, the um, particles go to the bottom of the, the can, you know, the jar. So even though I strained it, I don't want it in because there's still that remaining stuff. Now I'm going to put this on simmer and I'm going to cook it for about six to eight minutes on low and I'll come back. Okay my friends, this has been uh, steaming and on low for about six minutes, a little less than six minutes. I did add the green onion and I chopped up fresh tomatoes and I took a big spoonful, just scooped a spoonful, looks like a quarter of a cup of the sour cream. And I also shredded uh, the I have this uh, cheese that I bought. I buy it at Whole Foods. Aldi has it. Um, it's uh, or Costco has it. It's a uh, cheddar, but it's uh, from England, and it's like a champagne cheddar. It's delicious. If you ever see it, buy it. It has a the uh, flag on it, and this is some of my uh, uh, feta cheese. But I'm not going to use. I may use all of this, but I'm not going to use all of this. Okay, so it's basically. Absorbed. I'm going to put the chicken back and get the chicken warm. Now, if you don't have chicken and you don't, you know, want to use chicken, you could not use anything. If you have chopped meat, you could put chopped meat in here. But the chopped meat has to, I would cook the chopped meat first and then take it out and set it aside. See, so now the meat is cold, so it's going to make the dish cold. And I'm going to put the tomatoes in. Don't you love has as I go along, I keep on adding ingredients. I do that all the time. And taste it because I did have to add more salt to it. This could feed a family of eight. And it's very filling. Oh, it's so good. So I want my chicken to get warm. Now I'm going to put scoop in the sour cream. If you don't like sour cream, but you like uh, ricotta, ricotta is uh, the English name for ricotta is ricotta. You can use ricotta. You don't have to use this. You can use if you like Philadelphia cream cheese. You can put that in, and it gives it a nice tangy flavor. Okay. I'm just going to break a couple of pieces off. And I usually do this at the end, right before I serve it, because I don't want to, I don't want to melt the feta. Because it's going to melt anyway. Because it's, you know, in here, and this is cooking. And now I'm going to add my, my cheddar cheese. And now, I just want the cheese to melt. Can you taste it? Mmm. Oh, is that delicious. 
You're going to love this dish. Is that delicious? But before I turn it off, I'm going to add some of the feta. I'm just going to put some crumbles down because it gives it that tangy flavor. Now, this is a big pot, so I'm going to add the whole thing. Okay. I'm going to shut it off. And the feta is going to cook in the warm couscous. And as it stays in here, it's going to, you know, the couscous is going to absorb the liquid. There's really not that much liquid in here. Guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments, please post them below. I love to um, interact with uh, my fellow YouTubers. And uh, if you subscribe to my channel, I always have new videos coming in. Thank you. Bye, everybody.